What's up guys, Anders here with a season guide and overview. We're sometime into the seasons and we have received the updates for the next season as well. So I decided it's a good time to release this video so it won't be outdated by the time we get the fall season in September. Now, before we get started, I just want to give a big thank you to my supporters of the channel. You guys help keep this channel going and make videos like these possible. So thank you so much for your continued support. Now, in terms of seasons, I had some long progression videos recorded, but the seasons ended very quickly for me in terms of progression since I got a little bit lucky on my enhances. So instead of doing progression videos, I'm going to summarize how you should be playing seasons so you can get an idea of what to do, whether you're a new player or a returning player, and basically detail exactly what I did to get to where I am on my season account. So what is seasons. If you're new to the game, seasons is a way for you to basically turbocharge your gear progression in Black Desert. By the end of it, you'll have what is known as old soft cap, the bare minimum to start getting seriously into PvP and just enough gear to start grinding the later areas in the game. Now, season lasts usually about three months and allows you to access season specific channels or servers in the game where there is no forced PvP allowed. You get specific sets of gear to enhance called Tavala and Naru that have higher enhancement chances than normal gear. At the end of the seasons, you graduate and are able to convert that character and gear into account bound items able to be used by any of your characters. You can select one max enhance item you have to convert it into a real, I guess you could say boss piece that is one enhancement lower. So let's say you take a pen Tavala armor and you convert that, you will now have an account bound dim tree spirit at tet now dim tree spirit being one of the best pieces of gear for the body slot so it's a good transition now to get started you'll want to choose a class that you want to play my class guide on this channel is still fairly relevant though there is a new one coming once the latest class releases and we see where everyone's going to fall after the pvp changes so good classes for pve in seasons level gear keep that in mind guardian awakening musa awakening Mewa Succession and Warrior Succession, though really, if your main focus with Seasons as a new player is just PvE, you want to choose a class you enjoy to grind on since you'll be spending a lot of hours doing so. Now, if you plan to do Arsha Seasons, which is the PvP channel, you'll want to use Ninja Succession, Warrior Succession, Guardian Awakening, Wizard Succession, or Sorceress Succession. Now, after you choose a class, you want to go through the main story Story, do all the main story quests and you want to stop after you hit Valencia part one. So if you complete Valencia part one and you're a returning player or already have the quest accessories, you don't have to continue. However, if you are a new player, you do want to continue with the main story quests. You'll be around level 58 to 59 by then and you want to continue but skip Valencia part two because that is basically nothing to do with anything. One of the worst storylines in the game, not really worth doing doing. So once you do that, once you complete all the main stories, you can side quest to level 61 if you're still not 61. You will get one free Pentavala earring and one free Pentavala ring for hitting level 60 and 61. Now you can use all the free resources you're getting from the season server. You get to craft Naru accessories and gear and enhance that stuff, but I strongly recommend going out of your way to enhance Naru sets instead of Tavala since you can quickly surpass Naru with Tavala gear. Basically, a pen Naru is the same as a Pride Tavala. You can exchange it for a Pride Tavala. It's not really worth using that many resources for Naru, just enough to get you to the point where you can enhance your Tavala gear. First thing you want to do is really focus on the main hand weapon enhancing if you choose a succession path to your class. You want to focus on the awakening weapon first if you choose the awakening path. Awakening usually requires lower skill points, so it's up to you whether you want to use awakening or succession on a class. The reason we want to focus on the weapons first is because AP is going to allow us to grind faster. Grinding faster means we get more XP, more money, more items. That's what you want. Now focus on completing the season pass as soon as you can. The season pass, there is the free version, which you want to complete as soon as you can. And then if you decide to battle pass purchase, you can also complete that as well. Now completing the season pass as soon as you can is going to allow you to to hand in 10 timeless stones for one refined stone on a daily with the NPC and allow you to take your daily reward box. This reward box can give you normal stuff like cron meals and droughts 
or it can give you accessories that you can sell for money, some uh, crystals that you can sell for money, pretty good stuff. If you also have a season pass, you'll get an additional loot scroll every day and loot scrolls increase your drop rates while grinding for one hour each scroll. It's very powerful. Basically nowadays, everyone just grinds with loot scrolls on if they can. Now, like I said, weapons are the most important for you right now. You want to get the weapons to try first and then the armors can stay at pry. The, the really minimum requirement for that would be just stay at pry. You don't really need much more than that. The only accessory you should be enhancing early on is the Tavala necklace. It should be minimum duo and max 10 at this early stage. The reason we need a necklace is because if you've done all the main story, you should have all the quest accessories. The only quest accessory we don't get right now is the necklace. So you need a necklace and that's why I recommend you get the Tavala necklace. Now, after that, you want to go for weapons to Tet first and then get your armors to try. And then once you have that all set, you can go weapons to pen and then work on your armors to pen one piece at a time. Now, when both your armor and weapons are both pen, you can focus on getting your Tet Tavala necklace to pen. And then after that, finally, you can start working on your other accessories one at a time. I would work on the ring first and then the belt and then the earring. And after that, you're pretty much done. To complete seasons though, you do not need pen everything. Pen main hand weapon or pen awakening weapon with everything else try and quest accessories will get you to the required AP and DP to complete the final daily quest, which is just 200 AP and 250 DP. If you are a returning player, the final day 40 quest gear requirement of 200 AP and 250 DP can be completed on any character you have. So if you have an old main class with some gear on it still, they will satisfy the quest conditions and you will be able to complete it. You do not actually need to have the 200 AP and 250 DP on your season's character. This is actually true for all of the daily quests. You don't have to complete them on your season character. You can complete them on any character you have. Now, every daily quest is going to be an autocomplete until day 17 when you start having to do very simple tasks. None of these tasks are difficult to complete, even for a new player. Now, after you complete the 40 days of quests and the end of the seasons comes, you will get a pen kaposha ring or a pen kaposha earring, depending on what you choose. Now, the ring is equivalent to a Tet Crescent ring, which sells for about five to six billion silver, depending on your market, of course. And the earring is equivalent to a Tet Narc earring without the camisole monster damage and two more accuracy, making it worth around three to four billion silver, depending on your market. It is recommended you go for the pen kaposha ring though. Now to progress through the story, it is recommended you switch to normal servers or Olvia servers if you have access to that to avoid congested zones you find in season servers. This is especially important if you're starting a new season where there is the most amount of players running through the game world doing quests. It's going to be really congested and you're going to have to wait a long time for some quests to be able to be completed. So if you want to avoid that, go on normal servers. You don't actually need to be on season servers to do the, the main story quests. Now, once you're able to make sure to complete the weekly season quest, you can do this once a week, exactly seven days after you complete this quest, you can do it again. It's not at reset. It's just exactly seven days after you finish the quest. Choose an area like Poly Forest or Gahaz Bandits and platoon or party up with other people to get the quest done quickly. Now, being in a platoon or a party will still count for your kill quests. It's going to cut down massively the amount of time you need to be spending trying to finish this weekly. Now, if you're a returning player, you can also accept the quest and complete it on another character. So the quest can be completed on any channel. So if you wish, you can swap to a normal server and grind in peace if you want to grind out the 5,000 monsters that you need to kill. And after which you complete the quest, you will be able to accept it again, like I said, seven days after you complete it. So always make sure to do this weekly quest when you can. You also want to choose the 600 timeless stones reward if you're still progressing through the armors and weapons to pen on the Tavala. And then you want to choose the 90 ore reward if you're on to the enhancing your accessories. That's the best path. The refined stones are really not worth using at any point, in my opinion, as a reward choice. Of course, if you get them naturally, it is useful to use them for, for try attempts, and that's pretty much it. It is recommended also that you grind Polyforest, Gahaz Bandits, Fattis, Bashim, Nagas, or Shira Ruins whenever possible if you're looking for enhancing materials. If you're looking to level for strictly silver per hour, honestly, Polyforest is the best till you reach near full pen, after which you're going to want to go to Akman Temple in the desert zone, but that's probably going to be towards the end of your season. Now, crons are items that prevent 
prevent you from downgrading and prevent accessories from blowing up if you fail. So accessories can still downgrade if you use crons, just keep that in mind. And if you're going to use crons to safe enhance, you should only be using it on pen attempts. If you're a new player, it is recommended you only cron pen accessories. When enhancing the Tavala gear, you can speak to Fugar once your armors and weapons hit try and tet for fail stacks. He will give you a 40 stack for hitting try and a 60 stack for hitting tet. So keep that in mind. For the best use of your fail stacks, you want to follow this guideline. And using fail stacks greater than what is recommended will lose you money in the long run, but it's still going to be up to you whether or not you really need that item to go to pen or tet or whatever. And using crons is okay if you're going to be using the Tavala gear after the season is over. And that's my opinion, of course. For try attempts, it is recommended though you use the refined stones, like I said. If you have them available, 30 of them is going to guarantee you a try for the cost of the stones and 50 durability of the armor or weapon. So it's pretty good. For repairs, never use memory fragments and instead use the refined ore that you get. Memory fragments are just a waste on these weapons and armor. You have until September 2nd to complete the summer season objectives. So you should take your time and explore different classes if you're new. You can delete a class immediately. It's It only takes a few minutes, unlike the normal 24 hours. So you can experiment with new classes early on. And with the aid box that you get as a season's character, you can have that in the storage and then pass it on to your new class if you wish. Remember though, the weapons will not be able to be used by classes that obviously don't use those weapons. But however, you will still be able to use armors and accessories and your account progress will be saved. Though the story mission progression and uh, character specific stuff, you're going to have to go through the story again, basically. The season pass is worth the money if you want to buy it. I will do a giveaway for NA in EU, so leave a comment to enter. I will select a winner in 48 hours after the publishing of this video, so good luck. If you still need a season pass, I have a code for you, so hopefully uh, someone who really needs it gets it, and, and good luck to you guys. Also, in terms of tips, make sure to use your leveling aid box early on. You get this very, very early on. It is basically your first season reward, so you'll get it immediately, and it's for free. They give you combat XP buffs, they give you grind buffs, but most importantly, they're going to give you a lot of enhancing materials up to level 56 so it's worth opening them continuously even if you're losing out on the grind buffs in my opinion leveling eight box goes all the way to level 61 though the rewards peter out around level 58 or so now as for leveling i talked about going through the main story and then doing side quests it is really strongly recommended that you do the main story through dregan if you're new or like i said valencia part one if you're a returning player leveling to 60 through grinding polyforest on season servers or on normal servers will be the best way to go since you will also gain skill points which you will need remember you only get tavala enhancing materials on season server though so you want to grind as much as you can on those servers to help you progress if you want you can use the training dummies found in every major city you can buy xp and skill xp books from the town npcs every hour is going to cost you 1 million silver and it is recommended you do this if you have no other afk activity or wish to level while you're away from your pc it's going to be a little bit difficult to find a training dummy spot on season servers though you can use normal servers if you want but remember season server you usually always has that combat buff all the time. Although on the weekends, everyone has the same amount of combat XP boosts and skill XP boosts. So you, it won't matter what channel you are uh, leveling on or what channel you're using the dummy on. So like I said, you have until September 2nd till season server ends. So take it slow if you're new and can only play a couple hours a day. You will have plenty of time to reach the season objectives. The new fall season will start a couple of weeks after the end of the summer season and it will include the same types of gear with new rewards and a new season pass. Getting resources a little bit easier on the next season, but that's pretty much it. The fall season will also incorporate the weapon swap coupons as a one-time offer. This coupon allows you to change a weapon of any enhancement level to another class weapon, saving you having to sell that weapon and then buy it for the new class. So the caveat is that you will only have enough tokens in the fall season to get one weapon swap coupon for free, while the other two, you're going to need to have to basically go through the paywall of the season pass so keep that in mind this is also just a one-time thing they've done this in korea for their new season uh, this is probably what's going to happen for us in the fall season but after which this whole weapon
and swap coupon thing will be integrated into the game in some way or another through probably acquiring it freely through the completion of some objectives we still don't know what those are and we probably won't know till the end of the year and that's it for me for this season's guide to give you an idea of my own progress i have played na seasons for about a week casually and reached near pen everything so it's very doable on my eu seasons account i have done the minimum and use honestly the gear for fail stacks and that's been very good i've used about 1500 crons on na to get the full set i will eventually use after the season ends and i've used 170 crons on eu to get that one pentavala piece that i needed to convert at the end of the seasons now if you play on na you're going to be able to buy outfits from the central market more easily which can be converted into crons one premium outfit costs about 335 million silver which nets you 330 crons now on eu less outfits get sold so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do this you can buy crons from blacksmith npcs for 2 million silver each this is basically paying 660 million silver for the same 330 crons that uh, na players pay 335 million silver for so double the price if you don't use outfits like i said if you take it slow though you won't need to worry about needing to buy so many crons and you'll be fine so if you have any questions or want to ask me for help on either eu or na you can whisper me or add me in game at adners a d n e r s i have the same family name on both regions so just keep that in mind and as always guys thanks again for watching thanks for listening i'll see you all in the next one take care